All right, welcome everybody. And thank you so much for being here tonight and um, part of the Friends of the Cabildo member lecture series. We are on a fiscal, um, a fiscal year. So this is uh, our last lecture for the year, um, but we will be returning back in August. So we'll have a little break for June and July. I hope that you take advantage of these, uh, these lectures as members, you get them free with the Friends of the Cabildo. And, um, and if not, you can always purchase a ticket for a small amount, but at the same time, you can become a member for pretty close to a couple lectures and you've already paid for your membership. So I hope you take advantage of that. We're gonna do a three-part series on, uh, on the Battle of New Orleans and, 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 and the War of 1812 in August. And then we're gonna get back to much more authors and everything like that. Um, and doing two to three a month. Uh, so in August, we'll be, we'll, be, we'll be putting that information out. So we hope to see you guys soon through the summertime. Um, as tonight goes along, please put your, your questions in the chat and I will, uh, and depending on you know, how, they're, how they're, we're doing them, we'll either ask them at the end or we will uh, we'll ask them as we're going along unless if it works, but um, Sorry, I have a, a corgi that just is not wanting to enjoy. Step outside. He's a cute corgi, but he is found a guy doing the yard across the street and having a field day over there. And then she. Um, so tonight we're going to be doing. Uh, so we did uh, Robbie's lecture on the history of New Orleans architecture on. Saturday, and I hope some of you guys were here for that. And then, um, and then we do our neighborhoods of New Orleans class starting in June as well. But we're going to be talking about some more, more New Orleans architecture. And is the author of several books, including a beautiful one on, on Longview House and Gardens here in New Orleans, which is really a treasure, um, kind of over there on Bamboo Road. Um, and, but she's also the author of a, a new book and, uh, Carol, you could probably the book, we have the book available for pre-order for people because it's already the first round already sold out. So we have access to pre-order of the books so we can get those to you when they do come in. So, uh, the author is, um, her, her latest book is A. Hayes Town and the Architectural Image of Louisiana. Please welcome Carol Reese. Thank you, Carol. Thank, thank you, Jason. Um, thanks so much. I'm going to share my screen. I've got some images to show you tonight. It is a very informal chat, which seems appropriate to the sort of first days of summer. Um, I don't know about you, but my I'm in the School of Architecture at Tulane, and of course, you, I'm sure you're aware we just had graduation, so things are really coming to a kind of close. The semester's over, and I know many of you probably have kids in school who are now on summer vacation. So I thought we'd just do something very casual. Um, and I do encourage you to ask questions. Um, I'd love to chat with you after I show you the images that I've got here for you. So I'll show my screen. Let me do that. Uh, let's see, where are we? Oh, we're here. Just one minute. Okay. Get out of this share. There you go. Okay, so um, what I really want to talk to you about tonight is um, the book that the University of Louisiana at Lafayette has published. It came out uh, last October, A Hayes Town and the Architectural Image of Louisiana. Um, many of you, I'm sure, know uh, Hayes Town was an architect who uh, practiced both in Mississippi, but for most of his uh, professional career, 
which was very long, um, in Baton Rouge. He was born in 1903, and he lived to 2005. So he lived almost to the age of 102. And um, he's well known for the approximately 1,000 houses, residences that he designed, um, really promoting uh, a heritage style of Louisiana architecture. So this book is really a hybrid sort of a book. It's, um, it's both an exhibition catalog that documents the exhibition that we did at the Hilliard Art Museum on the University of Louisiana at Lafayette campus. And it's a compilation of a set of oral histories that we conducted in order to make a film for the exhibition. And those oral histories were done with members of Town's family, with his professional colleagues, um, and also with his clients. So um, when we created the book as an exhibition catalog, we did it after the fact, after the exhibition, which was shown at the Hilliard Art Museum for six months uh, in 2018. The film uh, that was based on the oral histories um, for the exhibition was shown in the exhibition. Then I took the oral histories and uh, uh, processed them, made them into narratives. And those um, are the bulk of the text of the book. So um, what you're seeing here, is the entry wall to the exhibition at the University of, of Louisiana Lafayette Hilliard Art Museum. And we wanted people to come in to a drawing table that Hayestown drew at. This was his drawing table. That's his box of paints. Um, there you see on the wall, the memorabilia that he kept around him in his office. And through the window that we fabricated there, uh, through a photograph, you see a view into his garden. And this was from his bedroom, actually at the end of his life, where he drew, looking into his garden at his house in Baton Rouge. And then the exhibition opened both to the left and the right and in the galleries behind um, this, this wall. So, um, uh, uh, what I'm hoping is that we'll convince you to take a road trip to see um, the exhibition as it's traveled. It's going, it's now at two museums that I've never been to, but they're not so far away. Um, one is the Imperial Calcasieu Museum in Lake Charles, and the exhibition will be there through June 26th. And then about a year from now, it will be at the Mazur Museum in Monroe, Louisiana, um, from May to August. And I believe they'll be, uh, they're working on a venue in between. So um, please go off to see the exhibition if you can. And we'll be so pleased also if you're interested in, um, in purchasing the book from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette Press. I presented the book at the New Orleans Book Festival at Tulane in March, and I will present the book again at the Louisiana Book Festival in Baton Rouge. Um, so there's been a lot of, a lot of interest. Um, and I always say that if you go to <laughs> any sort of gathering and you mention uh, Louisiana architecture, Hayestown always comes up and people know who Hayestown is and they understand the work that he did, particularly on these houses. Um, so I'd like to tell you a little bit about how the or exhibition originated. First of all, um, the director of the Hilliard Art Museum is an old friend of mine, Luann Greenwald from Los Angeles. She worked for me, actually, um, 
more than 20 years ago in Los Angeles when I directed a Center for Art and Architecture in a Historic House in West Hollywood. And in 2014, she showed up in Louisiana, um, having been hired as the director of the Hilliard. So Luann um, wanted to uh, bring more attention to the building that Hayes Town designed. Um, this is it on the left, which was the first art museum at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Uh, it was called um, the Art Center for Southeast Louisiana, and it opened in 1967. Also, I'm just going to stop here and say that the, the contemporary photographs that you see that I'm showing you tonight are all by Philip Gould, uh, a Louisiana photographer who lives in Lafayette, um, is well known, and um, they're quite beautiful, large format photographs. So we use these photographs in the exhibition and they're published again in the book. In any case, um, Luann, when she came to the Hilliard, um, you know, we had this building, this um, very important Hayestown building on the museum's campus. I'll show you the modern Hilliard in just a minute. But this building by Hayestown was coming into its 50 year anniversary. And when buildings are 50 years old, they are eligible to be registered on the, um, on the National Register of historic uh, properties. So um, Luann wanted to raise consciousness about the building. She also wanted to raise funds to renovate it because it's um, a building that uh, is not meant for contemporary art, muse uh, art museum exhibitions of large scale works. It's fine for drawings and, and small paintings. It was modeled, as you can see quite clearly, almost it's almost an exact replica of the of the Hermitage, as it's called, um, built in about 1816 on River Road. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, near Darrow in Ascension Parish. Town never really did this kind of thing again. He was asked to do this by a member of the building committee at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette um, and to create a replica, but he wasn't a copyist. And that's um, what we hope to show in the exhibition and to really, uh, the, this idea that he took historic buildings and reworked ideas about them, well, his understandings about them, uh, into very livable houses for, um, for modern family life. So Luann, the director of the Hilliard, um, wanted to, uh, to raise funds to renovate this building. She also wanted to uh, raise funds to build another wing for the building that would meet the modern Hilliard that you see in both these images on the left and right, which was designed by uh, Eskew Dumas Ripple of New Orleans. That building opened in uh, 2005. And EDR, as we refer to Eskew Dumas Ripple, um, met the really challenging um, problem of designing a modern art gallery very close to uh, a close in, in uh, spatial uh, geometry to this extant historic building designed by Hayes Town. Um, one of the ways in which they did that was to replicate the uh, uh, repeat the rhythms of the columns of the Hayes Town building um, in the modules of steel and glass along the facade of the Hilliard galleries, and also to open that building 
uh, through its glass wall, but use it as a reflection, uh, a, a sort of a mirror that uh, reflected back the Hayes Town building. Here, I just wanted to show you the other um, goal that Luann had for the exhibition, and that was also to look forward to the capital campaign that ULL is now engaged in um, to raise money uh, for many, many different uh, projects on the ULL campus, but in terms of the museum to add another building. This is, ooh, sorry, the educa an education wing. So the 2005 uh, museum by EDR and an education wing by EDR would then bracket, create a kind of frame for the Hayes Town building, um, which is closer to the campus than these other, these newer museum buildings, which um, lay behind. Here you can see the uh, footprint of the first EDR building, the proposed education wing here, and the Hayes Town um, plantation style building uh, at the lower um, uh, right. Okay, so going into the exhibition, um, Again, my goals were really to look at the legacy of Hayes Town in Louisiana and to focus on his design, not only his design aesthetic, but the, his, his design method. Um, we're looking into the gallery here in two different views where we discussed the first half of his practice. He went to the Tulane School of Architecture. He graduated in 1926. And his mentor in the school, who was a preservation, our first preservation architect in New Orleans, Richard Koch, about whom some of you may know a, a great deal. Um, Richard Koch helped him to secure a, a position with Mississippi's then most prominent architect, whose name was Webb Overstreet, who practiced in Jackson. And when Hayes Town went to Jackson, um, he married his sweetheart, took her to Jackson, um, and they started a life there. He was a modernist. Hayes Town was a modernist. He designed buildings in what was known as the Art Deco or modern style that were. Um, steel reinforced concrete and they were very well received all over the United States. So in this gallery, particularly in these um, cases, we showed um, the magazines in which his concrete buildings appeared. Um, and uh, perhaps the best known you can see just in the background in the center here, you can see the um, Iberia Parish uh, Courthouse, which is an absolutely stunning um, <clears throat> Art Deco building, fallen sadly, you know, into some sense of disrepair. But it's still there and visitable. So there's another road trip for you um, out and about to see Hayes Town. Um, I want to make a point here about how we worked on the exhibition. One would think, oh, yes, we'll just uh, gather the architectural drawings, we'll get new photographs by Philip Gould, um, and we'll make a beautiful exhibition. Well, what we discovered was that the uh, Iberville Courthouse and the Abbeville Courthouse for Vermilion Parish we could represent in original drawings from Hayes Town's office because he had deposited those drawings at the uh, Southeast Architectural Archive at Tulane. However, what we sadly learned was that the other drawings for his office did not survive. Um, it's very difficult for legacy firms and families 
to keep architectural materials. As you can imagine, they take up a lot of room. They're difficult to store. And um, we were devastated. <clears throat> but what we found were a number of homeowners who had saved their contractor sets of drawings. And those are the drawings that we put into the exhibition related to the houses that we decided to focus on. Um, we used, we had them reproduced at very high quality and, um, and those are what we hung. <coughs> so what did we do? We, um, we showed 10 houses um, that you can see uh, represented here uh, on the screen to the right. We focused on Lafayette because naturally the exhibition was for the Hilliard in Lafayette. Um, and this was really Hayestown's stomping grounds. He lived in Baton Rouge. He practiced out of Baton Rouge. He raised his family in Baton Rouge but he was born in Crowley. And this was the area of the state that he was so drawn to and passionate about. So um, in Lafayette then, we showed the Bouligny house, the Bustani house, the Daly house, the Ford house, the Landry house, the McDade house, um, many of which I'll show you Philip Gould's photographs of. Um, we went to New Iberia where we, um, decided to, we chose and decided to illustrate the McMahon house, um, which is a perfectly lovely, um, very small house um, uh, built on, uh, sort of fashioned after an Acadian farmhouse. We came to New Orleans to Gretna to look at the Ward house from 1973, and also uh, to Metairie where we um, focused on the Heinz house. Now, what are you seeing in the gallery? Where you'll see, you'll see, you're seeing models of the houses that we uh, had built by architecture students at Tulane University, but predominantly at uh, the University of Louisiana in um, in, uh, in at Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge. Um, those students worked under the uh, tutorship in their studios um, with Ursula, Professor Ursula McCure. And um, that was a very exacting project. So we gave them the contractor's drawings. Um, they created these scale models and we decided that we would modernize them by painting each house in a color that was characteristic of the color schemes that Hayestown specified and used uh, again and again for his clients. He, uh, many of you may have heard the, the term, the German term, Gesamtkunstwerk, which means a totalizing work of art. And that really uh, characterizes Hayestown's architectural practice. He, um, he wanted to lead his clients into the purchase of furnishings, rugs, furniture, lamps, objets d'art, um, and to teach them about the sort of environment, that interior environment that he felt best suited his houses. He mixed, he famously mixed his own colors. He didn't use sort of off the uh, shelf colors that were available at, um, at paint companies, but instead he would mix up um, with his own paints, the colors that he thought were appropriate uh, for the rooms of each house. And then he would take that sample to his um, purveyors of paint and say, mix this up for me, um, which made it very difficult when his clients needed to repaint because they had to go back and, and fulfill them these um, very idiosyncratic colors. We tried to match those as closely as we could. We had fabrics that he had chosen um, from which we ascertained 
the color schemes that um, were his favorite. And in that, we worked with uh, a ULL professor of interior design, Nadja Kozinets. Um, and her students then came up with that color scheme. So this was very much a collaborative project um, among Tulane, LSU, and ULL. The furnishings that you see in this photograph, we begged and borrowed um, from his clients and his family, um, just to give a sense of the sorts of um, antiques the uh, 19th century uh, plein air paintings that he adored and collected for himself, the um, uh, even uh, sort of uh, uh, vernacular um, objects um, that he bought in Mexico, for example. Whoops, why am I not, why is it not? All right, so let's begin to look at the houses that we featured in the exhibition. This is his own house in Baton Rouge. It's in the Lakes District, um, very near the LSU campus. It's on a slight rise and the uh, front garden uh, moves down toward the water. So sitting on that um, broad and long front porch is a lovely thing to do. Um, he planted the oak trees and made a magnificent garden. And most important, he used this house to demonstrate to his clients his ideas about uh, Louisiana architectural vernaculars uh, and the way in which he would adapt them to modern life. Um, in the back was his studio. He brought all his clients here um, and he educated them uh, through visits to this house. Why is this not going forward? The um, earliest house that we, uh, no, sorry, the second earliest house that we showed in the exhibition was the Bustani house in Lafayette from 1966. Now, we chose this one very particularly um, for a couple of reasons. Namely, the client was Madeline Bustani, now Madeline Hilliard, who's, um, who she married uh, as a widow. She married the widower, Paul Hilliard, who had um, very generously given the first funds that allowed the uh, Hilliard Art Museum to build the SQ du Miserable building. But Madeline was a very close friend of Hayes's um, when she was a young bride and first married. And, um, and she wanted nothing more than to hire Hayes Town to design her family home um, that she shared with um, her husband, Charles Bustani, who was a prominent doctor in Lafayette. I'm gonna use this house to really bring you into Hayes Town's uh, method of design and the method of his madness. So I'm showing you on the screen then a drawing from a very significant um, project that was a works project administration, WPA, uh, depression era, make work, uh, project. This is for that drawing is for Arlington House in Natchez um, that was designed and built about 1816. What the Works Project Administration um, era uh, project was it was called the Historic American Building Survey. And many of you as architecture aficionados may already know about the Historic American Building Survey. It was called HABS. It was, um, HABS teams were formulated in every state of the United States to document historic American architecture. Hayes Town, um, 
you know, during the depression, there wasn't a lot of new work that was being built. And he sought and obtained the job as the Mississippi district officer overseeing all of the Habs work that was done in the state of Mississippi beginning in 1934. So these Habs teams would go to um, properties that were deemed at the time historic. And the teams consisted of architects who made the renderings like the one you see on the right, photographers and writers who wrote historians, who wrote histories of um, the buildings that were being documented. Hayestown learned everything he knew and eventually used about historic architecture in Mississippi and in Louisiana through these Habs projects. And I hope that you can see how closely then this facade for the Bustani House uh, mirrors that of the Arlington House in Natchez. However, if you look at the house itself, what we can't see here is that those low wings wrap an open courtyard at the center, absolutely uncharacteristic of 19th century Louisiana architecture. So there's a kitchen wing on the right as you're looking at the house, uh, the master suite of bedrooms on the left as you're looking at the house and the children's bedrooms are upstairs. This is um, the Ford House in Lafayette designed in 1973. Um, and I submit that when Hayes Town designed this, he was really thinking about um, those Creole cottages in the French Quarter in New Orleans, like Jean Lafitte's blacksmith shop, which you see here in this photograph um, on the right. Now, here's another interesting link to Habs. Richard Koch, Town's mentor at Tulane, was the senior district officer for the Habs program in Louisiana. So the two, mentor and mentee, were guiding and directing teams in the states of Louisiana and Mississippi throughout the 30s and into the early 40s. Um, and Richard Koch was himself a very accomplished photographer. So, um, what I paid very close attention to and what we tried to represent quite clearly in the exhibition were the connections between the Habs program and the work that Hayes Town later did. However, again, it's important to understand Town was not a copyist. So he's using the basic roof form the kind of the proportion of the Creole cottage, but behind this, what seems like a very unassuming small house is a two story mass that has um, all the family's bedrooms um, to the right, you can just see it just here. Poking out here is um, Mr. Ford's bar um, and these masses of that house then wrap around uh, a courtyard in the back that includes um, a concealed driveway and garage. So the site planning of these houses is really spectacularly clever. This is the Ward House in Gretna. Um, it's on the back cover of the book. I think it's one of the finest of the houses that we showed. Um, Again, based on um, a historic uh, set of Louisiana vernacular uh, two-story houses. Um, here I'm comparing it to Live Oak Plantation. That was an early 19th century um, building in uh, Wayan Oak in West Feliciana Parish that again was photographed by Richard Cook um, for the Habs Project. And here you see again these um, the sort of <clears throat> uh, recognizable characteristics of Hayes Town's houses: the exterior staircase um, that leads up to the bedroom level of the house, um, 
these would appear to be to the left and right outbuildings. Actually, on the left, you are looking at the garage, but on the right, that's the master suite, um, uh, sort of parading as an extension of a house. He loved the idea that his houses looked as though they'd grown over time, that they'd become adapted to families that were, you know, growing um, and enlarging. This is the McDade house in Lafayette. Um, I call this house like his kind of sort of his French Quarter reverie. Um, and so what we did in this case was to look quite closely at the Habs drawings for French Quarter buildings. Um, and I think, uh, I hope, um, I've, I can help you to see the comparison between the McDade house um, wrapped around its very private front courtyard and, for example, these Habs drawings of the courtyard of the Casa Flinard or the Valerie Nicholas house, um, which dates from the first decade of the 19th century in our French Quarter here in New Orleans. Um, Tam liked to do this. He liked to turn these houses sort of uh, inside out. And <clears throat> what you do here is the front door is in the corner right here. This is the living room uh, and dining room in this wing, bedrooms above uh, for the children and a lower um, one story mass here that was the um, master bedroom suite. Um, for the owners of the house. And then this house is still lived in by uh, Anne McDade, who grew up here with her parents. A very uncharacteristic house of this set was the Bouligny House in Lafayette. Um, Hayes never did anything else like this, in, uh, designed in 1982, because <laughs> His client, Dan Bouligny, who had a, um, a, a beautiful um, salon for quite exquisite imported rugs in Lafayette, from which Hayes uh, purchased and incurred his clients to purchase rugs for their home. Bouligny wanted a house based on Marie Antoinette's La Mot. Um, that kind of fanciful farmhouse that she built on her um, property in Versailles. Um, so we didn't make too much of this. It certainly didn't have anything to do with the theme of uh, Louisiana vernaculars or the image of, of um, Louisiana, except that you know, it was uh, modeled on a French farmhouse, um, albeit one uh, at one of the major palaces of Europe. This is the Landry House in Lafayette um, from 1982. Again, a house that, um, like the Medade House, uh, reproduces this sense of um, the French Quarter courtyard turned inside out. Uh, a little differently configured in terms of the flow of the spaces. There's um, a central hall with a stair here. The master bedroom suite is here, creating an L again to enclose a garden. The McDade house, that garden was much, uh, much more private, uh, much more secluded. This one's open to the street. Um, with the children's bedrooms again above and um, the living room here on the right, the kitchen and dining room on the left. But the house um, continues to a really uh, extraordinary garden in the back, designed by um, our own New Orleans uh, uh, Dean of Landscape Architecture, Renee Franson, whose work you may know. Um, he worked uh, on a number of Hayes Town houses um, uh, at different locations. And Rene conceived of this garden as a series of garden rooms, which you can see here, the parterres on the left, um, very formal. 
and then the patio with its gazebo for entertaining, which is what you walk into from the living room space um, behind then when the garden was expanded, not in terms of the site, but when the formal garden was expanded, um, a swimming pool was built in the back. It replaced um, a vegetable garden and Renee designed a pool house in addition to the swimming pool at the rear. So um, that really takes you through the set of houses on which I uh, wanted to, through which I wanted to illustrate um, the way in which we configured the exhibition. Um, these two photographs are of interiors. There are many photographs in the book of um, the interiors of these houses, which I've shown you. On the left here, is the, um, the, the, the study, uh, the library of town's own house. And you can see two uh, a critical principle here at work in terms of the way town configured the interiors of his houses. He loved this through view. He loved to bring you into the house and immediately sort of throw you into the landscape, which expanded beyond and created a very open relationship between interior and exterior. Here's um, his architectural office that I mentioned uh, before, but always the ubiquitous rocking chair, you know, under the pergola on the porch, looking out at the tranquil um, aspect of the garden. This is the Ford house, very much um, Mrs. Ford, Celia Ford wanted a very kind of um, uh, much more formal sort of French interior, but still even here, you pass um, through the center uh, hall on axis, cross axis with the axis of the garden that takes you visually right through the center of the house, merging, as I said, the interior and the exterior. And finally, um, this is the Heinz house in Metairie. Many of you have probably passed this. Um, again, you know, town is returning to the kind of River Road plantation um, view uh, that he, um, some of his clients were passionate about um, building for themselves. This again is a house that has a garden designed by Rene Franzen. It's one of his last houses actually um, completed just about a decade before he died, but when he was well into his 90s and we found pictures of his visits to the site in his early 90s um, uh, advising the construction crews. So now I have just a few details for you. Um, that endear us to the work of Hayes Town. First of all, again, whoops, sorry, his own um, front porch, <laughs> the olive jars that he loved to place along the uh, expanses of these porches, the fountains, this um, from the Landry House, uh, the fences composed of um, old, oh, I'm so sorry old cypress boards that he um, uh, sort of romantically used to enclose, but only at chest level, um, his gardens, because he, he liked these views, wanted these views um, uh, to expand. Um, the statuary that he <clears throat> wanted to place um, for a kind of focal point in his gardens and often that statuary, as you see in the Bustani garden on the right, was um, religious in nature. Again, the exterior stair from the ward house and those um, shutters uh, in, a, in a very particular town green, um, closing off the um, and creating privacy on that upstairs balcony. And then the ever present on the right pigeonier and the last um, 
uh, in, the, in the slide, in the, in the photograph on the right at the background, these were um, dove coats, but really masquerading as dove coats, they were most always garden sheds. But he wanted the image of, and this is at his house, this is at, is at Hayes Town's house, the image of, you know, a family life that had grown up over time, um, always trying to find uh, used brick, um, used wood, uh, recycling materials to give this patina of age. Um, and for the interiors then, uh, one of the details for which he was so well known are these copper um, hoods on the range tops at the top left, at the lower left, then the Mexican highly polished, highly waxed um, Mexican tiles in the kitchen. Again, the olive jars, the uh, on the far right, lower right, the Bevelo lanterns, which he is said to have worked out as designs um, with the Bevelo company in New Orleans. And finally, from the ward house at the top right, um, this incredible beam. Um, he, he always said, uh, and I learned from Mr. Ward in our oral interview that uh, town benefited from the fact that New Orleans, when he began to build these houses, beginning in the early 60s, was in a boom phase and buildings were being torn down left and right as um, New Orleans became one of the oil capitals joining Houston um, and historic buildings were um, at risk. So town um, <clears throat> very um, assiduously and smartly then sourced building materials from, um, from wreckage sites, um, slate, brick, wood, and so forth because he, again, wanted this patina of age. So in the book, you'll find, as I said when I began, a series of um, really quite wonderful um, oral histories. We talked to um, Sunny Town, who was um, in practice with his father um, as, uh, as, a, as a contractor. Um, and he now owns Town's House in Baton Rouge. We talked to uh, uh, Town's daughter, Blanche Town Gladney, um, whoops, whose name is here, um, the sister of Sonny. We talked to Blanche's daughter, Leslie Town Gladney, uh, his granddaughter who lives in Baton Rouge and is a wealth of information about townhouses. She sells real estate and she has her eye on his whole um, practice actually. In terms of architects and, um, and professional colleagues, we talked to Kevin Harris who's principal of Kevin Harris Architects in Baton Rouge, um, who taught with town at LSU and as a kind of younger protege uh, was actually smitten with town's practice and models his practice on town's own. We interviewed Steve Dumas, the principal, uh, principal of SQ Dumas Ripple, whoops. Um, and then we interviewed various clients, including, as I said, Jim Ward, Sia Ford, um, the Boulinese, oops, and Madeline Bustani. Um, so I'm gonna end my stop share there. And we have time for questions if people have questions. Yeah, I have a, just a few more things I oh, wanted sorry. to say um, about this. Um, and that is, <laughs> when you read the thing that's so fabulous about the oral histories is that you hear, again, many of the stories that you may have um, heard already about what a zany and wonderful human being Hayestown was. Um, he drove very expensive, fancy cars 
Rolls Royces, Cadillacs. Um, he flew his own airplane. No one actually, anyone getting into an airplane with Hayestown was taking his or her life into their hands, but they also took their lives into their hands when they drove with him. He was, he was a sort of mad pilot and a mad driver. He loved children's, children and dogs. He famously dropped in on his clients without announcing. He would come early on Saturday morning. Um, clients would say, we were in our pajamas and he asked if he could come in and they couldn't say no. Um, they loved him. They became his family. Um, they invited him to their children's weddings um, and graduations, and he attended. Um, he, he also was known for, um, you know, the uncharacteristic ways in which he uh, treated the people who uh, created carpentry, um, often mantelpieces for his houses, where he would have them take tools to weather, beat up really, and weather the just completed, gorgeously crafted mantelpieces so that they would look as though they'd been, you know, in the house for generations. Um, he shopped with his clients. He, the reason he he flew his clients around was he brought them consistently to New Orleans and he shopped with them for antiques at what was known as the French antique shop in the French Quarter and Henry Stern. Maybe you've heard about those, um, those very well-known establishments. And then he would take them to lunch at Galatoire's. So it was all a kind of seduction um, that he engaged with, uh, with for his clients. He sourced materials from Rika's, which is where you can still go to source materials in various salvage yards. And he even, um, he even created, you know, a, um, a type of crepe myrtle working with um, Steel Burden, who was a landscape designer associated with LSU. You may know um, his estate, Windrush, and the work that he did in Baton Rouge, but it was a particular crepe myrtle with twisted um, trunks that Hayestown uh, specified for his gardens. So um, he's much beloved, much appreciated, and I'll be glad to try to answer questions. Um, but thank you so much again, Jason, for the opportunity and thanks everybody for joining. Thank you, that really was a fantastic uh, talk and um... It was, I, I, I learned a lot because I, I, I've always heard the name and I've seen some of the houses, but I, but to, if you, the way to put it in with the context of the exhibit and then get to see all those, those houses, it's really spectacular. And I was going to ask you how he was with clients, but it seems that his clients and him got along very well. <laughs> he didn't work with people he didn't like. Yeah. You, yeah. you could you could approach, it has been told to us that you could approach Hayestown and if he didn't think he could work with you, he wouldn't take the commission. Um, another question. Uh, once, you, once, you were, once you were his client, you, as I said, you were his friend, you were his family. You, it was a loving relationship. Um, another qu a question I had was, um, other than Louisiana, does he have, did he get, much work out of Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas. Yes, yes. He designed uh, east and west. He went. He designed for clients in California. He designed for clients in Florida. He designed for clients with properties in the Caribbean. Um, he designed for clients as far north I know as Kentucky. Um, so, yes, he. And today, you know, you find a lot of copies um really uh all over the south um into the mid midwest of his work uh denise lacoste says there's so many beautiful a hayes town homes here in lafayette uh one of his older homes is on beverly jive drive just so beautiful with the outdoor house um jason i'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you can you just get no, speak up a little bit or get closer that, to your um, mic. Denise Lacroix says, there are so many beautiful houses 
um, older, let me see, houses in Lafayette. I hope you don't mind me sharing a few during the presentation. One of his older homes is on Beverly Drive and just so beautiful with the outdoor house. Um, and, and then Donna Shula Camp says, who would you say was his early, his competition in his early years for clients? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that well, Jason. Who did you who did you say was who would you say his early competition was in his early years? His competition? Yeah, his competition they asked. Um he he practically invented <laughs> this approach to practice. I would say that there are other architects who are well known in other areas of the state. Um, the one I had hoped we might compare him to, um, and Monroe was um, was uh, John Stubbs. Um, but really, he he cut out a, a niche for himself in a territory in which he didn't have any competition, I would say. Others uh, might disagree with me, but that's, yeah. that's what I would say. No, no, that's great. Uh, Harry, Harry, Hayward Terrio says, it's fascinating information. I especially appreciate the personal insights and the personality. Uh, yeah, it does sound like he had a great personality of, of really, uh, uh, you know, just. To, to oh, someone's can... asking about the cover of the book, Jason. Can I show? Oh, I this? put a link. I put. You can do show it there. I put a link so they could click it. But yes, do that. Yes. Okay, and the reason I wanted to show it, I meant to, is because on the cover of the book is one of his very well-known Christmas cards. He painted these memory images of Louisiana just fabricated out of his own um, experience, again, with the Habs project and his knowledge of vernacular architecture in the state. And he would send then his clients uh, Christmas cards with these sorts of images on them. And many of his clients collected the Christmas cards, uh, which he produced over at least two decades. And we showed those in the exhibition as well. All right, we don't have any more questions, so I'm going to leave it at that. We finished a couple minutes before seven o'clock, so it went great. Carol, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk about the book, talk about the exhibit. Um, where did you say the exhibit's going to next? At the Imperial Calcasieu Museum in, in uh, Lake, Charles. Lake Charles. It's there now, and then, then it's going to the Missouri Museum in Monroe. Perfect. So if you're, if you're in Louisiana, that. you know, take, go, please uh, take a gander of it and uh, enjoy these amazing houses and the amazing work. I, I mean, it's not just houses he did. I mean, obviously you show just that beautiful fence and the, and the courtyards and everything he did. It, it really is a, uh, you know, he was very well-rounded. So I want to thank you so much, Carol, for, for speaking tonight. Uh, congratulations on the book. We have uh, pre-orders available. You, uh, the, the link is right here, so you can pre-order them. And when we get them in, you can we will get them shipped out to you immediately. And those are with the discount of the Friends of the Cabildo of 15%. Yeah, Jason, I think that book is not going to be out and ready to ship until August. Yeah. 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 yeah, we have it, it. It mentions that on there as well. Yeah. So, um, but yes, that's a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. So thank, thank you, you so all. Much. For yeah. Thank you all yeah. for coming. Yeah, thank you. And we will see everybody uh, in a couple months when we're back on to our Tuesday, regular Tuesday nights. So thank you so much. Bye. Bye.